Okay, welcome back. Hopefully at this point you've gotten this program installed on your computer uh, and you're able to then follow along with me. While we do these example exercises, these example analyses here together on the video tutorials, uh, we'll all be using the same data set. So you can follow along and you should be getting the same exact answers as I am. So I'll go ahead and run you through how to load in the data, how to apply the tests, and what to look for in the output that is going to be what you're looking for. So the first thing we need to do is actually get some data in here. Right now I'm staring at a blank screen. I've loaded up the program. I've maximized it to fill up my screen and uh, I, I have nothing. I can't do anything. So in order to get your data in, because we're going to be using pre-made data sets, things are a little easier. You don't have to worry about putting the numbers in yourself. So if you go up to the top left corner, these three parallel horizontal bars open up the menu or you can open up files, save files, etc. So we're going to open up a data file and you'll see that its default, at least on Windows, is to go to the My Documents page. So that's why I said it's helpful to save these CSV files into your Documents folder. If what you're looking at here doesn't have the file you're aiming at, uh, this Browse tab up here will open up a full search through all of the folders on your computer. So if you saved it to your desktop, for example, go into Browse, choose Desktop, and you should find it waiting there for you. But for now, uh, I've got uh, various files loaded up in my Documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click Jamovi underscore demo dot CSV. And that's going to contain example data that we can conduct analyses on. So click on that, loads it all up. And now what we're looking at is a data set with several variables. So we've talked about how to think about data sets and how things are structured before. Uh, so we see we've got, what do we have? Six variables. One of them is called student. This is just an ID number. It goes all the way up to however many students. There are a hundred students in this data set. So if I scroll down, I see we go up to 100. So we have 100 observations in this data file. And in addition to an ID number, I've got uh, gender indicated here as a uh, categorical or nominal level variable. I've got the year in school that these students are as another categorical or nominal variable with four levels. Uh, I have age, which is a continuous numeric variable, and then some hypothetical quiz score. So I made up these data for the purpose of this exercise, but let's imagine that this is data from a bunch of students in a particular class. They took quiz number one early on in the semester and quiz number two later in the semester. And we can sort of see how all the various variables connect with one another. So I have their score out of 10 on quiz one, their score out of uh, 10 on quiz two. And so all together, we've got several variables to work with. So each column is a variable, each row is an observation. So the first thing we'll do is to look at basic descriptive statistics of these uh, people, of this sample. So if I go into this exploration tab and I click descriptives and it comes up underneath it here's where we're going to be able to find the kinds of things we often use to describe our data set uh, and so this also is going to introduce you to the basic way that Jamovi does business so once I clicked on that descriptives tab it changed the view that we have of it. We're on the left side of the screen. I'm looking at all the variables in my data set here, and then some options and more options and other things. Uh, and then on the right is the output side. This is where the results of our tests are going to appear. And the cool thing about Jamovi, uh, unlike other programs, is every change you make on the left side of the screen will automatically uh, update the right side of the screen. So you can sort of see in real time how things are shaken out. So let's say uh, we want to do a frequency table to sort of get an idea of the representation of the number of people of different years in school. So I'll go ahead and click year, which is the variable that I'm interested in, and I'll transfer it over into variables. All this means is I'm designating year as a variable that I care about. It's the variable I'm doing my analysis on. And if I go down here, I get a little checkbox that says frequency tables. 
I check on that and lo and behold, here in the corner, I see a fully formed frequency table. So you remember in the early parts of this class, we did all this by hand and in a couple of seconds now I have a frequency table and I constructed this pretty thoughtfully. So we have 25 freshmen, 25 juniors, seniors, sophomores, etc. You'll notice uh, that it orders things alphabetically, which is a little annoying. We can sort of maybe, maybe change that later, but this is just to show you how this uh, comes out. So 25% since there's 100, this is looking like the kind of frequency table that we spent some time doing. Uh, if I transfer gender over as well, it'll give me another frequency table uh, breaking down by gender identity. So we have female and male respondents, uh, in this case 48 female, 52 male, and just showing me the, the frequencies there. Uh, so, if I also wanted to get some basic descriptive statistics of our other variables, uh, I could go ahead and move those over as well. If you hit the shift key on your uh, keyboard, you can highlight multiple at a time. So I started at age, hit shift, held it down, clicked quiz two, and it selected everything up until that point. So I can throw that over here. Uh, and you get frequency tables since I kept this checkbox marked. I get frequency tables for age. So I can see I've got 21 18 year olds all the way down to one 28 year old uh, and everything in between of the, the various things. Uh, scores on the quizzes. I can see quiz one ranged from six to 10 out of 10. And this is the breakdown. So all of these variables that I've had in here, all of them get a frequency table. And that gives us some information about what's going on. Uh, if I go into statistics, this tab here, here's where now I get all of those indicators of central tendency and deviation that we have looked at before, variability and so on. So uh, this table up here, this descriptives table is starting to take shape. Uh, and you see that because year and gender are categorical variables, it doesn't make any sense to compute the mean, median, or whatever for those. But for our continuous variables, age, quiz one, quiz two, I now have automatically calculated for me the mean of each of those variables, the median, uh, the minimum, the maximum, all of those are the defaults. So I know that in this sample of students, the average age is 19.9 years old. The average quiz score on the first quiz was 8.24, on the second quiz 9.02, etc. Uh, there are other options uh, in here. Most of these are not super important for us to keep in mind, but they are here if we want them. The one thing that's not a default that is usually handy to see is our standard deviation. So if I check standard deviation, see it adds a new line here, which now shows us that our standard deviation for age is 1.74. For quiz one is 1.1, 1 .1, uh, etc. And again, we can interpret standard deviation as we have before, which is to say that if our average age is about 20, we say that most people in our sample are between 18-ish uh, and 22-ish, right? So this standard deviation above and below the mean gives us where most people tended to be. So I get all of that information in one go. Now the one thing I want to show now as we're still getting used to this program is what you can do with these results. So it's nice that they're here, but how would you tell me what you found? How would you tell the world what you found? The cool thing about Jamovi is that these are all formatted pretty darn nice, right? You could just copy and paste these tables directly into a Word file or any sort of rich text file, whatever you want to do, and they already look good. And the nice thing is you can actually do that. So if you right click on the table, it brings up various options. The clear one that we're looking at uh, is copy. So if you just copy this table, I can go ahead and open a Word document here. And I'll go ahead and make that a little bigger. Close this all out. And all I have to do is paste. And there it is. So when you're doing homeworks, when you're turning stuff in, this is how you would show me the results, right? You can very easily just copy from Jamovi, copy that. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy this frequency table to show you how that works. 
hit copy, move into our Word file, and right click and paste. Uh, various options there, but if you keep the source formatting in Word, it's going to look fine. So if you just hit Control V, that's also going to throw it right in there for you. So any of the analyses that we'll do in Jimova, you can very easily copy and paste into a Word file, uh, which is something that you'll want to be able to do for your homeworks to show me that the numbers that you got straight out of the program match what they should be. So that about wraps up this first entry point into using this software. So we were able to show how to load in a pre-made data file that has 100, uh, 100 different observations and five different variables. Uh, and then we also saw how to use descriptive statistics to summarize those data, looking at both frequency tables and computing measures of central tendency and standard deviation, the kind of stuff that was really annoying to do by hand and would have been especially annoying with 100 cases, but can happen pretty easily, efficiently, and in an organized way in Jamovi. So in the next video, we'll push this even further to do actual statistical tests, uh, and so I'll see you in the next video.